We're back, Judd's Buds, episode 100. That's how exciting that is. Uh, <laughs> as always, you're those spoke Z joined by my good buddy, Mr. At State of Hoppy. Hoppy, how we doing on this fine Thursday for episode 100, the much, the much anticipated worldwide episode 100? How are we doing? Oh, we're we're doing good, and that just had all of the vibes of uh, there's a guy on Pardon My Take who's like designated nerd, and he literally comes up with nerd nuggets every week and just randomly started inserting do 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 nerd nugget of the week, and it sounds just like fucking Butters from South Park, where he's like do 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 do. Hell yeah, uh, dude! Had the exact same energy. It matched so perfectly. Hell yeah! Love that for us. Love that for us. Um. Uh, decent, decent. I mean, I have stuff going on. There's some things going on NHL wide, Minnesota, a lot going on there too. We, we weren't even going to talk about this, but because Cosgrove said it, now no, I feel obligated. To. Like, yeah, I don't we'll know. Add that I'm, in. Just I'm just happy. Yeah, <laughs> we need him say. back. Um, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on here, but <laughs> oh my god, um, how do you? How was your Valentine's Day? How was your Valentine's Day? How was the chats? valentine's day actually as well how was yeah your... chat how was the valentine's day uh yeah. mine was good i mean got through it sufficiently didn't have to get a second mortgage on the home didn't have to sleep on the couch like that's really the main check boxes big that we had to hit yeah big win right there it is funny how it's just like after a while it's like yeah it's, it was fine yeah valentine's <laughs> day i don't know why we uh, this is it's a fine it's, day it's cool it's just you know we're it doing happened. this pass fail, pass fail. Yeah, yeah. Pass. It literally at this point is the pass fail, which is a nice spot to be in. If I'm being like, it is nice yeah. just to be in the pass fail part. Yeah. But I will say, that being though, said, the fail sucks way harder. Oh, um, if yeah. you do, <laughs> it's, it's catastrophic if you do hit the fail. But it's nice. A little pass yes. fail system is always good. Fail um, must be avoided. Um, also, dude. So we go to McCormick and Schmick's. It's a steak place out here weird service in general like i know it's valentine's day busy whatever but like we had to ask a couple of times to get forks which was oh yeah different for me um and i swear i asked her between two drinks both were whiskey based one of them was a manhattan the other one was a little bit riskier and she's like oh you have to go with the other one i'm like okay but is this thing going to be really sweet? Cause like, I couldn't really tell based on the ingredients. I'm like, this could be risky. She's like, Oh no, there'll be the same sweetness. I took one sip. I'm like, Holy fuck. I have diabetes. Like yeah, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Th this is going to be the same sweetness as a Manhattan. Shut up. It, it's just terrible. I fuck. I'll tell you what I get anxiety when I see a drink on the menu. I'm like, well, that name should not be applied to a drink at all. Let me see what's in the drink. All right, I think they changed around every fucking name of every ingredient too. Like they fucking made every ingredient sound shitty. So I don't know what I'm getting myself into. And then it shows up one sip in, you're like, this is insane. I hate everything about oh, was it $27? Cool. Love that for me. Shit, awesome. No shit, dude. <laughs> well, and then Z just he's like, I don't know how I feel about these ones, the ingredients, the names. And he finds like Sapoku. He's like, Yeah, that. That wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that one sounds cool and funnier. I don't know. Um, well, that's good. Glad we, I think we uh, both passed. So that's good. We're still here. Um, integrity. We're oh, here with you. That's drinking brutal. with you. I shit you not. We had plans to go out at six and she didn't answer her phone until 930. It fucking sucked, fellas. That does sound shitty, but it's all right. You're among friends right. now. Yeah, this is the important. This is the important day. The day after. Um I mean, let's just get into it. There's a lot going on. I feel like we wanted to start 
it finally happened in Columbus. Yarmo gets the fucking he gets gassed, which I I keep every time something shitty, which by the way, there's a lot of shitty stuff going on with Columbus, obviously the whole year, but this past week, good lord. Um, it's free to not be a dick, just so everyone knows, you know. It's it's totally free to not be a fucking piece of shit, you know. Just saying. Um <laughs> But every time something happens, I'm always sitting like, what do th- what the fuck does Yarbo Kekalaitan have on the fucking owner of the Columbus Blue Jackets? Because this feels about, I don't know, two, three years overdue. Like, the year they beat Tampa, they made their run, a.k.a. winning a round in the playoffs. That was great. And I loved seeing a team being like, you know what? Fuck it. We know nothing. Like, we know we, sh- like, common sense does sell because these guys aren't coming back. I loved it that they said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go all in. They bring in Duchesne that year, and it works out in the first round, and it was lovely seeing John Cooper and the Tampa Bay Lightning lose. I'm always a big fan of that, and the fact that it was a very funny fashion, also a big fan of that. Um, But since then, it has been like train wreck doesn't begin to describe their situation the one thing that's gone well is i've loved pretty much their like all of their last four or five drafts but there's probably a couple kids that either have been ready to play or this year like they should be ready to be like taking significant roles in that team that they drafted the last couple of years and they're like nope we're signing like 32 year olds to seven year deals from out of nowhere and we're giving eric and branson a four by four so hey that that one i'll defend like this one thing but i don't want to i don't want to like be too good at this you know like let's let's make sure we're ego checking here hey though Either if, way, it's crazy. if johnny goudreau said get my boy good branson here whatever it takes and i'll sign whatever, whatever you, you do it you do it <laughs> yeah you, yeah at that point he's like oh fuck i know i said whatever it takes i didn't know he's going <laughs> four by four jesus christ Jesus Christ, this, this is like when Crosby said, get my buddy Jack Johnson here. And he's like, well, what the fuck? I didn't stay for three and a half by five. What are you doing? No, no, <laughs> fuck, no, fuck. Um, I mean, seriously, though, it, it feels overdue. I keep having to remind, as like shitstorm after shitstorm happened, I would just be sitting there either saying, Camp, like, how is this not, like, what does he have on the own? Or I'd be like, oh my God, they didn't fire him last time. This is fucking insane. But it finally yeah. happened. And I do wonder what, like, if there actually is a change after this. Because they've done so much of the ground, the groundwork in terms of drafting really fucking good young players. But bringing in guys for long-term deals. And that's the thing, too. Like, they're so tied to, like, a couple of these guys for, like, five, six years. And you're just sitting there like, all right, well... In a perfect world, I think you're going to bring in a GM with the exact opposite mindset of that. Um, but you still are tied down here, so I'm curious to see where it goes. But, like, I'm just hoping that it is the start of the turnaround because that fa- that is a fan base that deserves it other than those fucking dickheads this week. But yeah, no shit. And uh, our boy Dan Bradley chiming in. Yarmo should have been fired months ago at the same time they let Babcock go. Calling the shot, they fire Pascal Vincent at the end of the year and hire Todd Nelson. Um, yeah, I mean that it would have been perfect timing to have this align with Babcock, right? Like that was the easiest excuse possible. Clearly, they wanted him around, or he has something on them, or they didn't think they could find someone else, and they thought they'd ride out the season. And now it's gotten so bad with where Line A is at mentally. You've got one of your top prospects complaining that he's not playing. Your goalie literally hates everything about life. Like, and that's not saying that it's directly from Yarmo, but like anything that happens beneath you is your fucking problem because you put people in roles that clearly aren't working. Yeah, it, it is great. Like, because I feel like even some of the deals that I'm now shitting on at the time, that they were, I was like, well, this doesn't really make sense, but I guess like this will make them marginally better for like a year, maybe two. Um, and it's just gone the complete opposite. And uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, 
<laughs> but not even. <laughs> but the and yeah, exactly like you said though, they had that out right there with the Babcock situation, which I mean, it still blows my fucking mind that that's that ever happened. But he shouldn't have even been there to make that decision. That's the thing too. Like there were so many other times where they could have, like made this decision, and the whole Babcock scenario never would have happened. Um, but like you said, that was like it felt like the easiest time to uh. Yeah. part ways like well easiest in like i mean that's relatively speaking but like it is crazy that it took this long because i mean it's been like disaster after disaster and i just do feel very bad for those like legit hardcore good fans because like that building is when they're good like that place in the playoffs is insane like i that it was a uh, 20 Oh my god! I think Ryan Johansson was still there. That series against Pittsburgh was bananas. Like, but when they came down from three nothing, that like that series what was at fifteen, fourteen. Can't remember. Um, yeah, but they've got a, such a solid fan base. They deserve way better. Um, and hopefully, this is the start of it. But it is crazy. That it just took this long. And I feel like he had some crazy shit cooked up at the deadline. They're like, all right, we can't. We, all right, fuck <laughs> it. We're doing this right now. Like, no, no, no. Fucking exit now. Fuck it. God damn. Uh, it's, it's a crazy yeah, time to it, do it. It is It is interesting timing. And I don't know, dude. That there's got to be something where Davidson just paid no attention throughout school. But the only day he paid attention in math was – Two negatives make a positive, and he's like, "All right, if I just let Yarmo make one more fuck up, he's back to good." Like, yeah. it's the only way that works. But it's funny too because you mentioned the drafting, which I mean, you've been super jacked about that. But how big of a hand has he actually had in the draft decisions? Like, I know early on he was big on pursuing Europeans, but that's really as much as we know for sure, right? Like, is yeah, it? I mean, the thing the thing with Yarmo is he, that's that's where he in terms of just like post playing days. He's always been one of those guys that came up through scouting. So he actually I do think he's somewhat involved. Obviously, once you transition to general manager, you, you're doing significantly less of that. So I would say that, yeah, it, a lot of that has to do with their scouting team, like their scouting personnel yeah. and the head of um, amateur scouting. But you know, I feel like we've I've we've said like this has been said about a guy like Jim Benning too. It's like yeah, once he was the guy making the big decisions, no, 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 that's not good. But in terms of just like raw talent evaluation and like the scouting stuff, a lot of these guys are very good at this. But once it comes to actual decision making, yeah, and like like franchise altering decisions, <laughs> like well, when that much money gets starts getting thrown around, right. then it's like, oh fuck, all right, that's not we can't do that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He basically makes but, it as far as like, okay, Macklin Celebrini, what do you think? Good hockey player. Okay. Cole Eisman, what do you think? Good hockey player. Like he this basically guy, knows this guy good gets and it. then he's like, all right, I'm feeling this guy. Instead of uh, like actually yeah. tearing it out further. It's like good hockey player or bad hockey player. Or good Branson who we can't explain to this day. Um, and yeah, Flyer Voracek, spot on. Yarmo should have been gone after the absurd trade of a first and second plus for Provorov, let alone the Babcock nonsense. Um, also got to uh, shout it out. Yeah, you weren't far from me, buddy. Uh, Pittsburgh Blue, just like a block away from where I was. And I actually tried to get reservations at Pittsburgh Blue and it was booked out. So good on you. Yeah, and now I'm just like pulling up their cap friendly page here just to kind of see what the outlook is. I mean, after this year, I think they're projected right around 20 million. I don't know if that includes some of these other ones, but um, yeah, okay. And I mean, at this point, I would assume you can probably tack on Elvis's 5.4 after either the deadline or the season because he's just like, yo, I'm done here. This sucks. Uh, he could not be saying it. He's at, it's not even worth saying he's being clear about this. He's being beyond clear. Like he's just like, yo, I don't even fuck. This sucks, dude. Like, he is he's not just saying that. At all. It's just straight up like, <laughs> oh, Elvis, how do you feel? Like, yeah, it was a good game, but I fucking hate my life. Um, can you guys please get me out of here? Like, I am being held hostage. 
I should, it's crazy. I don't know. Yeah, like, <laughs> like after this year, they still have so much money tied up long term, specifically the back end. Like mm. the Severson thing, I thought was crazy when they did it. The Proveroff thing was outrageous. Well, I mean, the you Branson, know what is, probably right. They went to Yarmo and yeah. said, "You want to keep your job? Make the playoffs this year." He's like, "Okay, I'll throw shit at the yeah, wall and see what I can make stick." He and here we are, yeah. no shot of making the playoffs. So like, all right, you can leave. Yeah. So like, I mean, let them make big long-term commitments, like franchise-altering decisions. Like this is, I mean, it's not nearly as funny. <laughs> but you go back to Edmonton with the uh, <laughs> the Koskinen signing. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally in his exit interview, he's like, "Oh, hang on, I just got to reply to this email quick." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the best thing ever. It was like, and he was fired eight minutes later. <laughs> like, God, uh, fuck. We didn't take away his fucking email address. Yet. <laughs> fuck. uh, it's too but, good. We'll see what happens. I'm very curious to see, like, what the timeline is now because is it going to be Davidson? Like, is he just going to step in and do this thing, like, throughout the rest of the year? Because it, like, it couldn't be more uh, crunch time than it is right now with the deadline coming up. And as you would say about any team in this position you really need to get this deadline right. Well, I don't even know how much they can really do at the deadline, to be honest but with here's, you, looking here's, at like, the players who yeah, probably want out. Disagree. I think there's moves that can absolutely be made, but the real question is, what's worse? Him making just like bad trades, not getting the value back that he should, or just completely whiffing and not participating in the trade deadline? Right, right. Yeah, no, that's a good point too. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. just looking at it, I'm sure they'd love to get – I don't even know what you get for Elvis when he's locked up three more years after this at 5.4. Like, they're defensemen. They're all locked up for another year after this anyways. They have one RFA on the back end, Jake Bean, who they – I think they may want to keep him. He's 25 years old. He's a, He's got decent offensive potential. Up front. Their only UFA is Roslevic. So I would imagine you can probably get something there. 27 years old, 4 million. Um, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But it, it is great. Like, it is just, it's crazy how much just shit he got them into. <laughs> you know, damage, it's in like 24 months. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, oh, fuck. All right. The spreadsheet's like broken now. All right, cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Either way, all that to say. I do enjoy Blue Jackets fan base for the most part. They deserve better than this. You can throw that caveat with every uh, fan base, like for the most yeah. part. At yeah, best. this week, this week in particular was horrific. So I just like I have to say it every time now. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it it finally fucking happened. So hey, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Most uh, in discussion for best jersey in the league if you go with their thirds. That's phenomenal fucking sweater. God, yeah. it's so good. The wild could learn um, so many things. But we should move on because we spent shocking. We spent more time on that than we planned on. Yeah. Um, so let's I'm just get sure. let's just get right into the fun stuff. Morgan yeah. Riley. Yeah. <laughs> Ridley Greg, I was so close to drinking a thousand beers and buying like a Ridley Ridley Greg home away if they have a third. I would get a third as well. That was so funny. So, Riley, I think, what is it, five games that he got? Five, six? Uh, five, five, and he's appealing. Yeah, they're all appealing. They're not, it's not, it's not going to. No. He won't win. That's going to be a loss. Um, Ridley Gleg, Ridley Greg, clap bomb. Like, it wasn't just like a uh, casual, he fucking, like, it was a back scratching clap bomb from 11 inches away from the open net. And Riley, good for him for doing something, but it kind of made you look like more of a loser when all you had him just like cross check with the face. But <clears throat> now I, I got to ask uh, though, we, we love Ridley Gregg for what he did, right? Great move. If it's not against Toronto, does anyone give a fuck? 
mm. I think everyone's like, bah, whoa, what an idiot. That's pretty funny. But because it's Toronto and because they got their best defenseman suspended for five games and the fact that they are like drowning right now and the only people um, who hate the Toronto Maple Leafs more than every other fan base in the world are Toronto Maple Leafs fans. There's no one that hates the Toronto Maple Leafs like the Toronto <laughs> Maple Leafs fans. Um, so it was so much better that it happened against them because there was no fucking way. It wasn't going to be like a worldwide international story, like a geopolitical ramifications. Like fucking, This is affecting the entire world because how does this affect Toronto? Oh, this one does. Um, <laughs> I love him. I love Ridley Gregg. I've been crying laughing watching him in the WHL being the biggest terror. That guy wreaks havoc or was wreaking havoc in the WHL every single time he stepped onto the ice. Like he was doing stupid shit like this. I mean, shift by shift constantly in WHL. I love seeing him getting into this, these kind of antics in the NHL and he's a beauty and he's nasty too. So I love him. And it does bad things to Toronto. So everyone should be happy. Um, and fortunately for him, he's not actually hurt. But just watching the response was pathetic. So love that. Um, thank God Toronto signed Ryan Reese for three years. Thank God to avoid this kind of scenario where someone's afraid of um, overstepping their bounds. Good thing. Thank God. Uh, it's great. I am loving it. I've watched it 7,000 times. Um, what's, what's your take, Hoppy, on these antics from... Ridley Gregg. <laughs> I mean, I, I love what Greg did. And I think it's like, I understand Morgan Riley needing to do something there because if not, everyone would have carved the Leafs and said how fucking soft and big bitches they are. It, the fact that he had to fucking cross check him in the head is absolutely ridiculous, but it, it's just so great for everyone because of late he's like been their best player. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's just yeah. out. <laughs> Legitimately, the one defenseman for the Leafs that you were like, we can't fucking, we could not lose him for like more than two minutes. Um, and now he's well gone for two minutes. Um, it is unbelievable. But again, it all comes back just because it was against Toronto. Like, listen, I don't care what anyone says. I, oh, I will always think ripping a clap bomb into the empty net is hilarious. Like, why is if that it happens against my team, I'm like... <laughs> Because it's just disrespectful. It's just that's but, all it is. Why though? Like it's the like, yes, it, it's disrespectful, but like, is it really that big of a deal? I think it's just the fact that it's a fuck you. Like, suck on that. Because like but typing it in the, like, soft is better. Like, I, that's fucking dumb. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I like, can't explain it. Like showboating in front of the bench, I get. Like you're asking that for would it. have been oh that would have been even funnier. What if he right. did it from the fucking blue line and then just did like the bow and arrow by their fucking that would have been so funny. <laughs> just skates towards Riley and gives him the bow. <laughs> <laughs> just empties the quiver right in front of the fucking. <laughs> uh, oh god, so good. But what would have been a better outcome, like media wise, if Toronto just didn't even react at all, or what happened? That's the thing too, because they're already dealing with the no one doing anything to Marshawn about the Lilligren thing. That was uh, in the beginning of the year. They were automatically like, "Oh, okay, so this team's exactly who we thought they were." Um, better for social media or better for the media? Yes, different answers in my opinion. I think for the media, inaction would have been way better. For social media everything that ensued is better because there's so many angles to take and you can pick whatever side you can grab each individual piece, like whether it's the, the clap bomb in general and the level of disrespect and Oh, like playing with a guy like Claude Giroux, who would have never fucking allowed or done something like that. Then him literally eyeing down, like waiting, like, all right, who's going to come and fucking swing at me. <laughs> and then Riley being the one that does everything that goes along with him being their best player him taking just a blatant shot at the head and everyone trying to come up with ways that it's not going to be a suspension when there's no fucking way in the world that it's not going to be a suspension. Like the whole thing, there's just so many different ways you can take it that that's way more fun for social media than a black and white. Do you think this way or this way? You know what I mean? Like it's kind of yeah. a, uh, it's kind of a, uh, 
create your own adventure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You want to talk about a fan base that likes to create their own adventure. <laughs> Holy fuck. The amount of slow-mo breakdowns I've seen from the Leafs fan base on Twitter being like, if you really look at it from this angle, how much of his face did the stick even touch? None. He went down, he skated off, didn't need any help off the ice. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you're right, man. Actually, it should be a diving. It should be an embellishment, actually, two minutes. Yeah, right. You know, it's suspended Greg for five games. Fuck it. Um, it's phenomenal. They literally are trying to convince the world that the league's against <laughs> the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's like, yeah, no, I'm sure the league would hate it if anything good happened for the Toronto. They would hate it. Yeah, it'd be yeah. terrible. Uh, it's, it's so fun. good, but shout out Ridley, Greg. We don't have to spend a whole lot more time on it, but we had to at least mention it because it was, I mean, if he's not in the hall of fame tomorrow, I, there should be riots in the street. I love Ridley, Greg. For oh, that. Build, build um, the statue in Ottawa for sure. Oh, phenomenal. And I, I, my buddies, oh, my buddies from Ottawa were like messaging me like, how have you not tweeted about this? And I was like, cause I can't see my phones. I've been crying laughing for six hours. So it's fucking dying. Oh, so good. But we can move on. What um, he stands are the Swifties of the NHL. Oh, yeah. Well, moving on. The Super Bowl happened. All right. Moving on. Next. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Um, moving on past that. Um, yeah. A psyop. It's a psyop. No, I can't even. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, any other NHL stuff that we're not uh, – that we're missing before we go back right. into – I already said the Kessel signing rocks. That's, I don't know. That's as much as I can really put into it until he's actually on the roster. But what a fun team. What a fun, a fun, the best destination possible. Like that team rocks. They're very fun to watch. He's the best. So I was very happy to see that it's going to be Vancouver. I am thrilled. It's going to be really weird cheering with Isha, though. That's going to really like, be conflicting yeah we are yeah we don't have there might be like let's just i'm crossing my fingers there'll be ufc fights at the same time <laughs> or any worldwide mma fights going on at the same time as like a vancouver game and then we don't have to worry about it so um kessel did look gas john cosgrove in that first that, that state that, that is his state of being he has never yeah, not looked gassed. Like that that's part of the bit. Like I don't understand. If if Phil Kessel came in and looked healthy, I'd be like, don't want him. No. Looks if like he, looks like Phil's have, lost a step. If he doesn't he have looks, at least three Diet Cokes during that practice, like why the fuck are we bringing him in? And he shows up just chiseled. You're like, oh, it looks like Phil may have lost a step. Uh this not that's not good for Kessel. <laughs> it doesn't bode well. <laughs> D- doesn't have the uh, body fat percentage to survive through a full hockey game. He burns yeah, that shit yeah. off every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, and then right. he goes and he just bulks up and gets ready for the next game. And I love it. Yeah, such a beauty. He's the right. best. God damn. The NHL is better when Phil Kessel is in it. So that fucking rocks that he's not. Well, until it's official, we should. That would have been. It looks like okay. he will be back. We, so we, we hate slash just don't give a shit about the all-star festivities. How do you not bring him back when there's a draft involved? He, that should have been his. He be on the uh, team. Yeah. He just could have been part of the event in some capacity. And you know, people would have tuned in just because Phil Kessel was going to make an appearance of some sort. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would have been the best way to do it. Oh, in Harvard. Toronto too. Oh God, that rocks. Um, <laughs> yes, in Toronto too. I didn't even factor what that. What does great. this mean for the Leafs? Always remember, what does this Dude, mean for the? And him and Kucherov just teaming up would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> Fucking phenomenal. Um, actually, yeah. Sorry, because uh, Dan Bradley did mention it. Brad Marchand, one thousand games. I'm sure the world was celebrating. Every fan base outside Boston, I'm sure, it was emotional. Um, in, in different ways, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck this fucking guy. Um, he's my guy. I love him to death. Shout out, Marshy. Unfortunately, they did their best to uh, ruin the occasion, um, and they still lost. But whatever. Um, let's talk Minnesota. Let's talk Minnesota. Um, the return of the king, Mason Shaw, the greatest Minnesota Wild. Of all time. Um, I'm just happy for him. 
Shout out Mason Shaw. Was it today? That was this afternoon, this evening. Uh, signed his NHL deal. Was it seven seventy four point whatever? <laughs> Fuck it, whatever the actual dollar amount is. Good for him. Like every time we talk about him, the fact that he's come back from four ACL surgeries. And it was heartbreaking that last one because he finally made his fucking like he was fully in the NHL. He was a big part of that team, big part of the penalty kill, playing well. And like the look on his face last year that game in that game when he did it again, it was just like, I mean, is he really gonna put himself through this again? I don't know why that thought crossed my mind because clearly he's he was like, Yeah, yeah, of course I am. Um but he came back and in the AHL, he was playing phenomenal. He already had like two or three shorthanded goals, which is just like, of course he did. Um, and he more than earned it. So I'm so happy for that guy. Um, curious to see when he's, um, you know, back up in that lineup again. And if we see the, uh, the reunion of the Dewey's plus Shaw, because that's just my favorite, like chaos of all time. <laughs> um, I mean, do you find I'm just on it. the spot if he doesn't reunite that line? Mm-hmm. Oh, immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's you're gone. Um Straight to either do. way, I'm so pumped for him. That's fucking awesome. I that guy's a, that neck kid is a warrior. I I again if I like stub my toe, I'm out four to six. I'm out four to I mean I am a coward. So if I had that happen to me four fucking times, I'd be like, I'm never doing anything other I'm never moving at a quicker than walking pace. That, but I, I would, I I would walk. make it to four. There's no way. No. No, that's a good yeah, yeah. That's I, a good maybe point. get through the first one, be like, all right, I'll give this one more go. It happens again. I'm like, fuck this, I'm out. Yo, this is insane. Like, there's guys that do this more than once and then like do actual shit in the world. That's What's crazy. Crazier no, 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 no. Is that it's two on each leg. I know it evens out, you know. Yeah, that's evened out. He's got zero knees. It's crazy. Um, but that fucking right. Mason Shaw, Jesus Christ, like I, it's um, it's unbelievable. Like I really don't know who, how you can like get yourself in that mindset again. Like day one post surgery has to be like, all right, like here we go, a fucking again. And like it's obviously not an easy like rehab recovery. Like you never know if it's like, all right, let's see if I respond well to this surgery. Maybe six months. Worst case, either it just. You don't recover at all, but it could be nine months and you're sitting there like, yeah, this is just like what it is at this point, I guess. Yep. It's crazy to be man. Like, I don't know how this, I don't know how one human being does that, but I am very happy for him. So it's in a, in a season of absolute shit minus, I guess the last 10 games for Minnesota, right. any like positive storyline. I love, I'm all about it. So this Whoa. was great to see. Jesus all Christ. Right. What a beast. Gonna- if we're going to go positive, we've also got to flip it and go full negative with the immediate reaction to the Shaw signing was yet again, a reassignment of Beckman, which, Hey, Hordox, what do we got here is Beckman in the doghouse like Addison and Everson, which nothing will ever compare to the hatred that Everson showed for Addison, but that's entirely different conversation that we've left behind us. Um, it, it, at this point, there's not much to talk about with Beckman. Just flat out, it's like, is there any chance that he ever plays for the Minnesota Wild short of half of their team getting hurt this year now? Like, the only, I mean, the only way that you see it is if they do. And at this point, because they've won four in a row, they're seven and three in their last 10. Now they're three points out of a wild card spot they're going to convince themselves that they're going to like make the playoffs and like have a chance at a run. We know that's what, I mean, we said this was going to happen. They were either going to like, just get it and get the shit kicked out of them round one, yeah, or they're going to just miss and fuck themselves over it happen. But then there's actually having it happen and having to reconcile that fact. Like we knew it would happen, right. but it's still not the same until it actually happens. And uh swerve 95 asks the key question buy or sell. great question because let's say you want to sell but maroon's out 
that was probably the piece that you could trick someone into giving like a pretty decent pick. Someone will still do it. Like, what does he have? Another two or three weeks? Yeah. You can so that's him. still there. Yeah. Yep. Um, who else? Like, do him, do her. What do you get it? Like, that's the thing. This has been the conundrum that they, because of these contracts that they've signed, like you've got guys locked up that you just aren't going to part way with because they are a big part of your future. You've also got guys that you've locked up that even if you wanted to move on a, you can't because of the no move clauses or B no one's giving you shit <laughs> for anything. They're just in the weirdest fucking position now, even if you want to go full sell. And I don't think they're going to do that. Like either way, like I do, like they're clearly going to convince themselves that it's fine to be a second wild card spot. If you can do it, if you can get there. Um, Are you not worried opinion, at all? Like, Oh, I'm worried. History tells us the future. Bill Guerin can't fucking help himself. They are this close to playoff contention. He's going to buy. He is not selling. I mean, maybe it's a combo of both, but at the end, the yield is going to be buying. And it's going to be really weird. Again, it could like work out and be good. I still just don't see a way that the Wild can compete with any of the like big six in the Western Conference. Like, Who do you think they can beat among that group? I can't name no. a team. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just, I mean, what does buying even look like? You know what I mean? Which which I also understand, like, Bill Karen can't sit there and be like, yeah, we're going to punt because we can't beat any of these teams. Like, that doesn't look good. But it's like, like it's just a fucking waste. They are in, um, you know, that very familiar spot to Minnesota, just like that murky fucking middle. <laughs> like, they love yeah. it. They love it. Minnesota, they just love being you said like, they were like yeah. Minnesota, and I'm like, wait, they are Minnesota. No, 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 no. very, very familiar with this uh. position, this exact scenario <laughs> where it's like, eh. yeah. Um, that's uh, listen. There, the health was like there. It does feel like they do have crazy amounts of injuries every fucking year. Like it, that just does happen, but this year was insane or is i guess still at this point it's not like it's i mean spurgeon's already out so like there you go um they at full health are a significantly better team uh we know this than where they are but if they're healthy they at are some a point you have team. absolutely but yeah that doesn't mean that you're a contending playoff team right 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 right, right. so I mean, it's weird because you're sitting there like, yeah, a lot of decisions to make, but at the same time, there really aren't that many, I guess, because you can't. Like, I feel like they've, these fucking, the guys that you would be okay with moving on from, either, like, I don't really know how much interest there's going to be. Like, you can probably <sighs> one or two guys, but, like, I don't know. It, they're just in this fucking weirdly weird spot again. Well, it sucks, I know, dude. Do do they have to just pump the brakes and not make any moves because they don't have a capologist anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. Because because the it. cap crunch is definitely a problem. <laughs> it's just like guys, uh, <laughs> we got math issues, but no one to crunch the numbers, so we're just gonna do no math. We're we're just going. We're gonna fly by our heels here, and if we're just gonna do it, we're just gonna do this and see how it goes. I I I just don't know. It's just the weirdest yeah. of a like decade of weird hockey, not weird wild. Um, this has been a particularly weird season, and it, it is unbelievable that like they they couldn't be in a more familiar spot in terms of just the absolute murky middle. Like it is insane to me. But they're just like, this is nuts. No matter what they do, this is the exact same position they end up in every fucking year. It's crazy. Call it a magnet. Call it gravity. I don't care. They always get pulled back to the middle. There's there's no way. Yeah. They can't tank. They can't contend. It's just, yeah. Uh, from Mateo, so all of, Florida all of was a Penguins win away from not making the cup final. 
I'm sorry, this isn't even remotely comparable for me. I don't know if you disagree, Z, but Florida at least had a roster that made sense. Their season was bad, but their roster had contention written all over it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and a way they, easier path, if we're being honest. Right. Oh, yeah. 100%. Uh-huh. Um, but drifting away from that, this all started with the Adam Beckman thing. I At this point, you have to make a decision this summer. You have to. Like, I, I can't. And for his sake, realistically, like, word for word, Bill Garrett said, this is his chance. And he didn't even get a shift. Like, zero shifts. That's his way of saying, yeah, this guy's not playing. Like, I don't At mind. this point, you have to make a decision on this guy. Well, no, you I think the decision to. was like, made. <laughs> it was made. Yeah. That right. was the decision. So, and like, like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure Russo is dealing with some real donkeys in the mentions that are bitching about Beckman, but like, he's carrying the water a little bit there for it. And it's like, I, I just don't understand why Bill Guerin would come out and say, this is his chance, and then literally not play him. I, I just, did he do something like is this like addison like are we worried that he hooked up with like someone in the front office's daughter or something i just don't know why they refuse or not enough work on the driveway not enough pucks being shot in the driveway for adam back then 22 years i in my head he was older that's crazy um he's an rfa this summer 22 years old i mean he's at this point, there's not a whole lot more he can do other than like score 40, I guess, in the AHL. I, if he's not going to get a look, I mean, if I'm him, I'm like, do I really like, for the love of God, please, like, if you're not going to do this, like, if I'm not going to get something, get yeah, right. So, yeah, and like, crazy, you'd think, who knows if they did ultimately end up like getting to that position where they're not even going to contend with making that second playoff card, like the, uh, the wild card spot. Maybe he would get his chance to like get like 15 games or so. Doesn't look like that's the case now, obviously. Um, but it's, it, it is just so funny that it was like, this is his chance. He will not, he, but with, without getting a shift, <laughs> it's crazy. So at this point they have, they just either, like you said, the decision has been made. Or they better fucking make a decision this summer. Because, I mean, at this point, like, what, are you going to give them another fucking QO? Like, I, like, just hang out? <laughs> it sucks. He, he immediately I, I to Russia and plays in the KHI. He's like, I'm over this shit. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, PTSD. No, goes over there um, and tears it up with Yurov. And then Karen's like, well, fuck. Now I got a decision to make. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's the plot we all need to see unfold. Um, All right, we... We went dark for a little bit too long there. Let's go back to the light. Brock Faber for Calder. Like, I don't know. Talk talk me out of it. I don't know how you can not give it to him at this point. It is crazy. Like, it's weird. Like, I know. Like, we've all we all know how good fucking Connor Bedard is how good he's been when he's been playing in the NHL. Like he did it basically done exactly what everyone said he was going to do. But with all the amount of time missed now with Faber literally playing 30 minutes, like what 10 games this year, like he's just, he played 29 last night again. Like, and by far their best, most consistent defenseman. He's putting up points now too. Where I guess he has been the whole year and not, not like a now thing. Like we just didn't see like the actual point production coming, I don't think. Um for me, it's not really close. Like I just don't think anyone can come for this Calder spot. But it's just crazy to me. The amount of media people be like, Well, if Bedard comes back, I'm like, why are we doing this? It's if he stays healthy the rest of the year, he's by far the best, most impactful the uh rookie. For any team in the NHL at this point, even if Bedard puts up 25 goals, like it's not, it's not really without him. Wilder bottom five, which oh, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. Wild fans hate him for that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, actually, I know we should actually this we should start shitting on him more often. He should suck <laughs> Rocky more often. Actually. Dude, how how about uh, did you see the post from the Wild today or uh, those listening on podcast yesterday? Uh, 
Middleton, I don't know if it's going to actually be a thing moving forward, but they said they have a new segment coming up that is just Middleton with someone else, and they're sitting in those personal saunas, and he asks them questions. I need this. Yeah. I need, first, I need first that. Question, first question to Faber was, does this sauna suit make my butt look big? <laughs> I was like, I, I, I can't see your butt, man. That's a dumb question. It's like, all right, moving on. <laughs> but it's actually pretty funny. Um, I honestly, I would have died if they had, like, you know the the old school Gatorade commercials where the guys sweating Gatorade. Yeah. What if they had Brock Faber like sweating just like white milk beads? <laughs> That's outrageous. <laughs> two, two percent, two percent, or whole milk, I guess. Actually, no, I um, need yeah, need it, need that in my life. The only thing I hate more than liars is skim milk because it's water that's lying about being milk. <laughs> Ron Swanson is an American about. hero. You should all treasure him. Oh God damn it! Uh, I just did not see that coming. I could not have expected that one um long story short brock faber 33 points in 53 games he's playing over 25 minutes a night at this point unless bedard comes back and averages a hat trick per game i don't really know how you can look at anyone else for the caller so god what a fucking player and i mean i think forever he's been a guy it's like maybe he could be a complimentary number two two maybe not a number one he is a fucking number one defenseman at this point like incredible defensively and he's putting up decent offensive numbers here so shout out brock faber i, I it is funny that like before like ah we'll see you know like we sample size obviously like he looks good in the playoffs but you know we all know he's gonna have that rough patch and he's like no i'm not i'm not going to have a single one actually i might like make one bad play a game maybe um, but no rough patches. I, he looks like he's been playing in the fucking NHL for fucking 15 years. So I fucking love that guy. Um, and I, I mean, at this point, it's just weird to me, the amount of people like needing Bedard. They're like, ah, no, like we have to, like, it's possible that, you know, he comes back and scores a million goals and like, uh, well, obviously he'll be the Calder winner. It's like, no, I think at this point, Brock Faber, it's insane. Like a rookie playing fucking 25 minutes a night. <laughs> like is bananas so yeah but see connor has more points in favor even though he's been out a month that's a good point like a completely yeah. different fucking position and yeah no uh, thanks for I, making I will... me look like an idiot hang on though if we're gonna like try and spin zone this right connor bedard oh, ends yeah. up winning the calder silver lining edmonton fans will riot because Connor McDavid should have won the Calder then if you can be out for half the season and still win. So I would kind of enjoy that. That would be fun for All me. Right. <laughs> sure. That's, I like that. Any spin zone's good. Any, any excuse to make a Canadian team's fan base very angry, I'm all about that. So let's do that. Uh, not Montreal. For whatever reason, when they get pissed, like they get like mean. Like, oh, no, it's dark. They get mad about like dark shit. Well, yeah, they, they go get mad about French stuff. on everybody, and it's like, come on. <laughs> and, like, there's some awesome, like, again, just like all fan bases, there's some great fans. There's also some plugs. And for them, they are, uh, en français, not fun. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Only a couple more things on the wild that we wanted to mention. Uh, Eric Sinek, 24 fucking goals. He's two away from a career high. It is crazy. Like, another guy that, like, the career arc where it was like, yeah, he looks like a good third, fourth line defensive center. And then they were like, what if we just, like, put him on the power play? And all of a sudden he was just like, I will score every fucking power play goal ever. Um, I will just I, do that. I am score. I am score power play goal. Uh, and I will also contend for selfie trophies. I love and they've got the narrative love that is, contract though. The narrative has turned so much. Well, yeah, first the contract was 
hated by many. I'll admit I was one that like I didn't hate it, but I like stopped and thought like, well, this could go well or poorly. Like I, I wasn't totally sold. It's obviously a fantastic contract like him and Nuge both on that same contract. Like both teams are laughing their way to the bank. I am very happy that people are no longer pissed off and saying, why aren't you Brock Besser? I I will. I always get I just can't handle those fucking whenever I see those tweets, I'm like mute, 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 mute. I can't. Yeah, like th- like those tweets were. Somewhat reasonable for like what a year. I don't know, but. Either way, it's crazy that he's got 24. Like, he, like, imagine he potted fucking 40. <laughs> like, that would be unbelievable if he talked 40. It's great. Love him. Um, He'd be like out. the most, like, the least talked about 40 goal scorer in league history. Ever. Oh, ever. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I actually, when I, when he scored again last night, I was like, 24th of the fuck. I, I, didn't think it was true. I was like, that can't be right. That's not. Act- oh, shit. OK, yeah, it is true. Um, God damn it, Mateo. And hey, the more the more. Yeah, fuck. We can't so exactly have, why. bring Thank up you. dark memories here. Thank you, Alex. Um, buddy. Um, again, I just I I politely plead with you to stop the propaganda. It hurts every time. To be clear, like. See, we can both raise our hands. We were both shocked that the wild did not take Gabe Perot during the live stream that we hosted. Uh, everyone tune in this year. It'll be another banger, but like, like that's not a reason to just like obsessively like subscribe to all the tweets from BC and like, make sure that every time he does something you're posting and reminding wild fans, how awful it is that we didn't get him. Like it happened. It's over. Let's focus on Charlie Strammel, who, uh, by the way, Prosgrove, so what you're saying is Strammel will be the next Jewel Eric's neck. Lock it up, boys. That's Book how it, I'm choosing yeah. to view it. That's how I'm choosing to view it. Hell yeah. We love that. P- uh, in P- Judd positive bracket, vibes only. In Judd bracket, we fucking trust. Hell yeah. Period. It is funny it is how it was priceless. like, this guy's like, the best. This guy's the best. This I-J-D-W-F-T. <laughs> yeah, wow, that was bad. I would not. I'd be like, uh, uh A uh three stars. Niner and uh, uh uh S Niner. Did you throw a Niner in there? Uh going from a walkie talkie. <laughs> Tommy boy. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, um fucking right. It's crazy though. Eric's an egg, fucking 24. He's two away from a career. I'd love that for him. What do we Matt Boldy on a heater for three games. <laughs> like, I, uh, can you like rewind the record and play that again? <laughs> like, is this not the same shit as always? And like, I'm not taking digs at him because like the talent is clearly there. We know it. Now, do we think that like this three game streak of him popping off is just because Bill Guerin was named GM for Team USA? He's like, oh fuck, I gotta try now, huh? <laughs> and, yeah, and president hockey ops. <laughs> oh god, dual title uh, there too. That's oh. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, you gotta think about that. It's it's relevant. It's it's worth getting fired up about. Um, <laughs> but he, it's great. It's just such a weird year. I mean, in general, but there have been so many games where, like, I mean. Hines said it. There have been plenty of games where, I mean, all the top guys have been guilty of this at some point this year, but there have been stretches where he has been an absolute passenger. And then the last few games, though, like, I think people, well, maybe I shouldn't overestimate, I guess. I would assume everyone's on the same page. Like, the last couple games of him playing out of his mind is closer to the real Matt Boldy than, like, passenger mode i feel like that's okay to not get carved i don't know um and you like at the start of the year when they were so bad obviously they weren't getting goaltending but the top guys did nothing and wow look at that like when the top guys go insane 
they can't fucking lose. And they, they look incredible. They, they had 21 fucking shots on net in the first period last night against Arizona, who apparently stinks again. Um, yeah, that's they sad. must be. They're that's gone. They're gone. Element. Yeah. Um, but either, like, I, I mean, I don't know. We don't need to do like a full deep dive on like Matt Boldy specifically, but he was at least worth mentioning that the last few games, like since being called out, and like the whole team got called yeah. out. All the top guys did by Hines after whatever game that was and being called passengers. He has beyond stepped up. He was insane. It was a, the Vegas game. He was fucking unbelievable. That game too. Um, Matt so Baldy. Again, just good to see like, and this is why we've said like, they're so much better than where they are right now. Obviously oh, totally. it was a big time concern, but like, the top guys, when they even just when they play well, they don't have to be like they have, they don't have to go insane every game. But it is just great. Like the drop off is nuts when they're just not there. But um, and it's it's been like that even when healthy. Like right, they yeah. have had yeah, games yeah, yeah. where they just disappear in the fourth line is our best line. Um, I don't know. It's it's a debacle. That's for sure. And, yeah. You're right. Again, we've said it over and over. Everyone knows it. Like this is a team that when healthy and when like playing good hockey, they are a playoff team. But there are so many fans that are under this like illusion that that means that they're a contender and they can win a playoff round or two. And it's uh, as of now, I just don't see it at all. I'd love to be proven wrong. I don't see it. Yeah. Um. Either way, I just at least wanted to bring up the fact that he has been incredible. And I mean, so has Erickson. That Kaprizov's been, I, fuck. <laughs> like he's so fun to watch when he's like Buzzing. on and engaged. Yeah. Um, and the only other player I really wanted to at least bring up. Um, well, actually, that's not true. That ceremony for Flower was fucking incredible. That whole oh, night. Frick. That was, they did such an unbelievably good job with that whole, like that's one when you stretch out that tribute, that pregame ceremony to where like puck drop gets delayed by 25 minutes. I'm good with that. That's fine. That was so good. And the whole video, the fact that like, like that five minute tribute video, they actually separated like all the good hockey stuff. And then they actually like, had a whole other like minute or two just with him and his family. I thought that was like a nice touch to the whole tribute video as well. So just really well done. That was really fucking cool. I mean, I think he's one of the darlings of the NHL. Like there's not really a whole lot of people who have bad things to say about Mark Andre Fleury, but it was a very well deserved. And the fact they won in the most, like some of the most Mark Andre Fleury esque facts. <laughs> The goal, the power, power play goal against where he was, he turned the puck over and then he's just like diving around, <laughs> makes it one unbelievable save. And then obviously they get a tap at goal. But that last, what, five minutes, he had five or six 10 bell saves. So just like the most Mark Andre Flurry performance. He had some incredible saves. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was um, down bad that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah uh but good for, i mean playing so, a thousand games playing a thousand games any position crazy oh, for a goalie you, to do it the part Latang said do you remember his no. interview as part of the the tribute he's like yeah i mean i i saw the thousand games i'm like yeah i guess that makes sense with all the times that he's you know backing up and he's like oh fuck that that's a thousand starts Holy shit. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, um, that, what? what uh, with with Flurry, though, you said it, NHL darling, the dude can still play. Is he like a true number one? No. Can he make a difference for a team as the 1A or 1B, especially with some of the teams that are really struggling at goalie? Yeah. Are we getting to a point where it's either he gets traded before the deadline or he actually like re ups for another year here? Right. Yeah. I mean, could you see a world where he is back with the Minnesota Wild next season? 
Yeah, I think I could see that. I would see. I think that's more likely than him actually asking for a trade. Uh, he's not going to ask for a trade. I think Garen's going to go to him and say, "Are you open to going?" Well, that's what I guess. That's more so what I mean. Because like, there's no fucking way that they're going to do it unless he's like, "Yes." Well, you know, right? I don't think they can. Doesn't he have protection? Maybe not. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. But um, I mean, like, if you it, what I've heard from like national media that is probably a pretty fair assessment. If he goes to another team for a cup run, this is for sure his last year. Right. Like, yeah, if yeah. Not, he's going to stay put. He's going to try and stay with Minnesota. Like he's a family guy. He doesn't want to keep moving the kids around. If he goes, he's going. If he stays pretty real chance that he's back again next year and fans are going to be so conflicted between their like desire to have Wallstead come up and like love for flurry. It, that's going to be a fun kind of uh Ridley, Greg Morgan Riley debacle where like fans are just yelling to yell and they're not actually sure what they're upset about. <laughs> yeah. I, and I would like to, I, if he doesn't go at the deadline, and they do bring him back for the year. I don't have any fucking problem with that at all. I, at all. Like, I am. Oh no, Wallstead has another year. To, oh no, our go, the goaltender has another year to marinate in the NA. Oh no, like that's right. so. It's great. Now, um, what's the most fun team for him to land with? Should he be open to being traded? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the two popular ones that people have thrown out that I'm not fully opposed to or like new jersey or edmonton i feel like i've seen those ones thrown I don't around see how edmonton can possibly make the dollars work i also don't see him being like yeah i'd love to go to fucking edmonton no <laughs> yeah, new, new jersey i think would be fun as shit oh yeah my that's god. the one that, that sticks is a team out. that is a goalie short them and la but god can you imagine if he goes to la and yet again displaces cam talbot I need that. He, I need it. He would tell me like this motherfucker. Like, God damn it. Like, I, fucking <laughs> need it dude. I need it. Yeah. I'll change my answer. Take out of it. Throw fucking uh, LA replace my answer of Edmonton with LA please. Um, just because like, and I actually, I don't have anything bad. I don't like anything against Cam tell, but I love Cam tell. He's a beauty. Um, but it just, it's a very funny scenario in my head. Uh, it's so fun. But, <laughs> but again, I, I have a feeling he would. I have a feeling he'd rather play another year in Minnesota and not just because oh, with, I mean, he's been outspoken, like the whole not moving, like staying in one place with the family, right. all that stuff. But like, I'm just saying, like, I feel like no, he actually is closer to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the question, I don't think that's the question though, because yeah, like all things perfect. That's what he wants. But if he truly thinks like, you know what? I'm not going to play hockey after this year. I know that it's about the family and stuff, but you're telling me you can't handle three months with like family oh, separation yeah. to try and win another Stanley cup before you retire. I don't know. I'm not in his situation. He's obviously already very accomplished and decorated as an NHL player. I think I can talk my family into three months of me uh, being out and about to try and chase one more Stanley cup before telling them, Oh yeah, I'm going to be around all the time now. Yeah, no, I fully, fully agree with that. Involved with the Minnesota wild organization in some capacity. Cause you yeah, know, he, oh, has, I, he wants to, he has the yeah, check right that. there at the top drawer of Billy Garen's desk. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I fully, get, get fully him agree. with Ryan Carter on the call. I need it so fucking bad. We, oh, I just, we God. just need more Ryan Carr. I love Ryan. I love Carr. Dude, he's the fucking <laughs> I man. Love, I, I love, love how he interacts with you on Twitter too. Oh yeah, yeah. he the comments, literally comments about his hair. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Every time, every fucking time. Yeah, yeah. It, the COVID year, <laughs> where there was no fans, and it was uh, he like that was his first full full year of like being in, like doing uh, commentary with Lapanta like regularly. And every time I was like, he, this hair, like not a strand is out of play. And he used to just respond every time. He's like, dual exhaust, baby. Cause he would have the fucking mullet going. <laughs> I was just dying. Like, he's so fun. We, we have to get him on here. He's, oh, he's yeah. He'd, he'd probably I, do it. Did I tell you, uh, <laughs> uh, 
he uh, was talking to Darren Ballou, who was like longtime assistant coach at Mankato, which is where Carter played college hockey. And I went down and did an interview with him at Mankato Brewery. And he's like, oh, yeah, Carter told me about you guys. I'm like, oh, what did he say? He's like, I didn't really get any good advice. <laughs> and then when we took a break, he had a call coming in from Carter and told us, like, oh, yeah, I'm talking to these guys. And Carter was just fucking carving him on the phone. He's like, yeah, I know you probably fucked this up, did this, did this. And like, he is just a character. I love him. And I hope that he ever leaves the wild. I hope that he like, he is the best thing that's happened to wild media. I love it. He rocks. Yeah. And I am a big fan of him and King are with uh, wild on. It's so funny. Like it was actually even like a little bit better before they actually got the affiliation with, like before sure. that podcast, like actually part of it, it was so fun. Dude, it was Can so, you imagine some of those affiliated with like an NHL team? Like we would not be able to do anything that we currently do. To be like, all yeah, right, I, so I, I, I would be, <laughs> I'd be fired in 12 minutes. I, that, like they're like, this was a terrible decision. We haven't even announced this yet. And you've already fucked this up. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, no carts is, he is the fucking man. He's I love awesome. that guy. He's such a beauty. So um, yep, now he's yeah. got to find someone good to be his uh, number two for the broadcast. That'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good point. <laughs> um, yeah, moving on. So perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's uh, get to the prospect roundup to uh, end, end the show here. We're not going through the entire uh, prospect pool, but we got six guys here that we felt warranted conversation. Z, lead off. The uh, are we gonna go as far as to say number one prospect that's not currently with the Minnesota slash Iowa Wild in Riley Height? Where that's where we're gonna start. Um, just in terms of like, you didn't answer my this, question. The, what do you mean? Is is, is he? he the number one prospect? Oh, fuck. He's definitely yes. top five. The answer is yes. I'm, I'm just going to let Yes, he is. Let the answer he key. is. Yes. Um, I mean, beside Vlad, first off. Yeah, obviously. Shout out Isha, number one. He ranked him number one in his own prospect pool two years ago. Um, phenomenal. Just a, what a start to that fucking podcast, by the way. Isha, who's your uh, number one? Uh, Vlad first off. Why? Because the name's first. It, it's in his name. Okay, well, then, great. Then the, ne- the next one is, uh, let's see. Uh, v- uh, also Vlad, second off. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Isha, like, right. Bottom line, Isha's a piece of shit. All right, we love him. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, let's talk Riley Height, though. Because... <laughs> Uh, WHL schedule was light this week, so both he and Kalen Parker, who also had a phenomenal two games, I won't get into that though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> only had, two games, game seven, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is unbelievable the amount of goals that get put up every Prince George game, both for and against. So they went to Victoria. Speaking of Kalen Parker, uh, <laughs> speaking of Isha, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Isha, um. Game one, they kicked the shit out of him. Yeah, four one, which like is actually a very like the the under hit, you know. So that's always like a they're like, oh, we don't we're not here usually. We don't like unders in this uh, franchise. Um, and while he didn't put up any points, he was legitimately. Un- I think he played probably twenty seven minutes. Uh, and I mean, he's like taking face offs. He's playing center and wing. He the amount of absolute like end to end sports center top 10 mode rushes he led it was comical every fucking time he touched the puck he was creating scoring chances um and just none of them none of the pucks ended up at the back of the net but game two nine to six win on saturday against victoria which i mean it's just comical um three assists all three were absolute fucking dimes like the no look, I love when he gets the puck <clears throat> below the circle 
and like he just does the classic like fake like i'm gonna pass it back to the point no look through two dudes two defensemen's legs backdoor tapping big fan of that um but he is just like so he had a monster year last year as a draft eligible whl he was top five in points i want to say um mm. And I mean, this year, he's absolutely eviscerating his totals from the season before. Again, he's playing center. He's playing wing. Doesn't really matter where you put him. And every time he touches the puck, you're assuming that Prince George is going to either put the puck back in the net or there's going to be a high danger chance here. So every time he touches it, there's like panic. Like just when he receives the puck, you can see the panic in the opposition in the defensive zone. He can do it against the uh, off the rush. He can do it just like setting up in zone. Like it doesn't matter. Like he just creates offense in any way possible. And it's legitimately every time he touched the puck. So I at least wanted to mention him. He's up to 87 points now in 50 games. Um, I think he's tied for, I think maybe third in the WHL scoring now. I'd have to check again after last night. Um, Trade him. Trade him. But it's just, it's insane. Like 60 assists in those games. And it's just like, I mean, I guess it's the same thing I just said. It's just every time he touches the puck, it, you're just assuming that Prince George is going to score. Like, he is legitimately unbelievable. So, blows my mind that he was available that late in the second round or that he was even available in the second round uh, and that he just fell into Minnesota's lap. And I, at this point, I just looking at his kind of... Um, just the outlook where I think he ends up in the NHL and with the like prospect pool at this point, Minnesota, I think he could be, he's probably more like a winger than a center at this point, just because I think he is such a sniper that also is capable of playmaking that it's just like that classic dual threat offensively. And then you look at like guys like you coming in Kaprizov ideally is going to be around for a while. Um, you, you never know. Uh, well, but there's just so many guys for him to just set up, but then he's also a scoring like absolute threat himself. So I at least wanted to mention him just cause he is having such a fucking absurd season for Prince George. Um, and they're one of the better, the best teams in the WHL. So he is having a ridiculous season that he's such a good fucking player. So I think he will only need a few more, maybe one or two more years before he's starting to get looks because like he is like too he's already at the point where he's like too good for this fucking league um and again it's it helps that he's an absolutely stacked forward like the uh, lineup in prince george but sure he is their go-to guy like he is running you the show see him be able to play with good players though i mean it, it's good yeah. but that that's i mean i think i speak for everyone subscribed to our youtube channel which if you're not do it isha will be happy um but that needs to be the next highlight reel we get out. Just everything Riley Heights done this year. It's going to take you a lot more time because there's way more material. Um, Sabres traded away that spot for Greenway. What a bunch of dummies from Cosgrove. I will say they still got the steal of the draft at 13 to shatter my soul and every fiber of my being with Zach Benson. So I think they'll get over it. I think they'll live. Um, but we, we got it. Z, tell me if the CHL has an NCAA oh deal, God. get height on the Gophers for a year, see what happens. Like, what are the odds in Vegas for him to win the Hobie? Like, minus like 10,000? I can't even like compute. I, it's, I'm, I, that is actually breaking my, well, it's not that hard to break. Dude, but... him, and, him, Rhett Pitlick, and Oliver Moore would be so fun. <laughs> oh, like, what do you... <laughs> At that point, you have to like mic up every single defenseman for every team that's going up against the Gophers, so you get the ultimate minivan man Petrangelo yeah. moment when no, uh, no. in the... I want the lapel mic on the back of their breezers just so you <laughs> just hear them shit themselves every time he comes. No, no, no. They'll, they'll, uh, it's just, you're just going to hear them, uh, change. And then, uh, they'll just be them skating to the bench. Yeah. No, I'm, done. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, he's like, no, no, I didn't mean line change. I meant diaper change, please. Yeah. No. <laughs> down the tunnel, down the tunnel. <laughs> oh, Sean, I 
fucking hate you for putting that in my brain because that would be well, so well, goddamn fun. Well, two things on that too. Number one, Zach Benson, that first NHL goal, that has to be a top five all time first oh, NHL goal ever, dude. like between the legs, shelf, insane. Number that two, take man. notes. Take notes that you'd never know what these picks turn into. So Billy should not be afraid of picking up a mid to late first, second for anything on this fucking roster. Just saying. If Greenway, that, that pick any, turned into... anything going to yield us a first? Anything. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, clearly, because you pick up Riley Height at the end of the second round, so there you go. Like, you never yeah, know. Where you, Braden Point, fifth round pick? Mm -hmm. If we ever get Judd on here, the first, first question is going to be, first, like, how first. quickly did you enter that Riley Height pick when it made it to the end yeah. of the second round? Like, oh, man. Were you, were you hyperventilating? Like, I... Be like, holy, what are we doing here? Did you know he was still available for your first two picks before that? <laughs> I thought he was off the fucking table. <laughs> I've I've pulled that shit before though, where I like passed on something in a like weird draft where it's like, oh shit, like I just assumed he was gone. Damn it. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Uh, but Flyer Voracek. Also, the fact the Blackhawks didn't draft him with five different picks. Now, Wild fans will still tell you that missing on Oliver Moore, who they had no chance at, so it's not really missing, but like that. No, no, they did. People were more upset about him going to Chicago than they were about the Wild passing on Gabe Perot. Like, I yeah. thought that the world was going to burn. Yeah, no, I I literally saw someone tweet a video of an Oliver Moore gore, gore, goal the other day, and it was just like, the wild someone tweeted someone else tweeted the wild were right there this will haunt my dreams forever i was like they, they didn't have a fucking chance <laughs> this was never a possibility <laughs> well that's great too because uh supposedly uh per sources he had no idea that wild fans were blowing up like that but his dad was more plugged in and his dad told him some of the ridiculous shit people were saying about him getting drafted by chicago and he thought it was the funniest shit ever he probably was just incredibly confused. Hopefully we get clarity on how he felt soon. Um, uh, yeah. Either way though, I at least wanted to mention Riley height, which we did for 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, no big deal. Uh, he's, he is fucking unbelievable. Ten minutes, like it is yeah. just comical watching him in the WHL this season. So there we go. Hmm. All right. Well, next up Rasmus Kumpalainen, which I don't know. I like, it's one of those names where I would never name my kid Rasmus, but a I hockey might. player named Rasmus is a badass fucking name. I love it every time, even even though there's Rastus Ristolainen. Like, we don't have to go back to that. But Rasmus Kumpelainen, what do we think? So I specifically mentioned wanting to bring him up at least when we talked about like the brief roundup here, because mentioned well, number one, you mentioned him. Nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mentioned <laughs> wanting to mention him on record uh, specifically because at first when I was like, I we're, we're definitely bringing this guy up. Uh, they had a seven, two loss on Friday against Flint. And um, he was plus two with both goals. <laughs> so I was like, fuck yeah, that's he had his guy. <laughs> This guy showed up. Um, but <laughs> again, every time we talk about him, I have like, he is such an intriguing prospect just in the fact that like the things that he shouldn't excel at in hockey because of his like lack of foot speed or just, I don't know, just his profile of player specifically transition, uh, rush offense and defense those are arguably like a couple of the things that he like like the best parts of his game like again like it's it blows your mind because he will skate with the puck he will skate through the neutral zone into the offensive zone and either like generate a scoring chance for himself set up possession in the offensive zone put it on a like put it on a tee for someone back door with it for a tap in and it doesn't make any sense because I think he is moving in slow motion and it just blows my mind. So like when you talk about like players with all the tools, AKA the 2024 NHL draft class, like 
these are the players you look at and be like, okay, he is fucking huge. He's a six foot two, six foot three, 200, whatever pound, like two way forward with some of the most insane hands I've ever seen on a player. He doesn't move particularly quickly, but you also can't take the puck off of him. And he is by far Oshawa's best player in transition or off the rush at both ends of the ice. He is an anomaly. So this is why I'm so intrigued by Rasmus Kupalainen. And while like when they took him where they did in the second round, I was like, oh, okay, they were probably, I like the pick because I like the player, but there were definitely other guys that were like, okay, that ceiling's probably higher. I was so confused. Uh, you had never mentioned him to me pre-draft. And like, we talked about a lot of guys. So when the wild took him and I'm like, I don't know that name. And that means I'm scared about what that means for the pick. <laughs> yeah. I, the only negative part or negative reaction I had was the fact that my absolute fucking boy, not Unger Sorum, he should have gone first overall. So that was just like, right. um, was Fisker Mulgard went the pick after, I think, or before, I can't remember. before it was before app. I can't remember if it was the one, I think it was before Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. It was well, one so why does that matter? Z? You were just carving wild fans who are mad about Oliver Moore and how it's going to haunt their dreams. So, yeah, no, I think it, did, it made my heart to like, Oh, and then all of a sudden I was like, Oh, Oh, interesting. <laughs> All right. Hit, hit me up when Zach Benson gets taken right before your fucking pick. God, fuck. yeah, yeah, you, had, you had me so excited about him. And I thought there was no way he'd even make it in double digits. When he got to 13, I'm like, dear Lord, baby Jesus, please let this mm -hmm. happen. I, I won't ask for anything else. I swear. Yeah. Oh, him um, would have been so fun. Yeah. Maybe but either way, just to, just to get through this one. Yeah. Um, but like those are the things that's that made him so intriguing. It's like the definition of like a toolsy prospect that like <laughs> you let him so develop. Tool I know, but it's not a bad it's not a bad thing. Okay. Sounds like right. you're calling him a tool. Yeah, I know, but it's whatever, I don't care. Um <laughs> but that's what makes him such a fucking intriguing prospect. And like, you're not worried about getting him in the NHL soon. You're going to continue to let him develop because he can be a center. He can be a wing. I think at this point, in terms of general effectiveness, I think he could be probably a better winger maybe, but at the same time, like I love when he has the puck on his stick, but in terms of driving play in the NHL, I don't know. Like that's where the foot speed is going to be a significant issue, regardless of how good he is in transition. Like, if you're a center, hopefully you're driving offensive production there. I think he can be an even better, like secondary, like scoring option, like from the wing. So that's fine. Um, but I just love the tool set that he's got, like the skill set, the tool set, wherever we can go with skill set instead, if that makes everyone feel better. I'm not calling him a tool, you know? Um, tool set is okay. You called him toolsy. Yeah, toolsy. It's great. It's a phenomenal thing to be. A tool. <laughs> that's okay. all I'm saying. I'm a tool. <laughs> I, I'm not toolsy though. <laughs> so fuck, fuck. Um, either way, I just want to bring him up because he did have those. It was just very funny that it, like that's the definition of seven two loss. We were plus two with two goals. <laughs> like I had my guy. I was fine. I did nothing wrong. Literally. Um, he also had another assist in the three games he played. So he's up to twenty two goals, eighteen points, forty points in forty two games um and i just i really love watching him play and oshawa has a bunch of really fun players so um he compliments their uh their lineup very well um so he's definitely one to for everyone to keep their eye on him because i think he has a lot to offer at the next level once he gets there awesome well let's go to the mncaa offering a guy we haven't talked about a lot this year at least not in positive connotation it's been more like yeah we've seen it before what else can you show us jack peart back on the scene he had so i think i have to pull up his actual point totals so both his freshman and sophomore year while both years i would say well in particular his freshman year he had like a bunch of stick infractions that i was very much like like bro can you actually you you've always been able to defend i had plenty of criticism for him like freshman year but he still put up decent point totals i thought he was fucking awesome last year he still had some detractors whatever 
And this year, the big thing was like zero offensive production. Like, and I mean, absent from the score sheet almost every fucking game. And it was not necessarily that he was playing poorly or that he took a math. There was just nothing there. Like, yeah, he was pretty much doing what he did well in terms of like, again, for the prospects in the Minnesota defensive the defenseman in the Minnesota's prospect pool, they they're all like incredible transition guys, stretch passes, whatever, like just getting the puck from your end into the offensive zone, setting up possession. They are, they're all very good at this thing. Like it, but it just stagnated this year for him. I think it, I thought he took a massive step last year in terms of like actual playmaking from the blue line this year. It just has not been there. You could say that's also a comment just on St. Cloud in general. Then that's a weird team for them. They, they had a terrible start, like horrible. Um, and I mean, at this point I'd say he's probably been utilized more defensively than he ever has been um, in those they first had, two years. at St. Cloud. I had a Minnesota wild season. Like they started dog yeah. shit. Then they were torching and now they're back to like medium. Yeah. Um, and fortunately for them, they had a nice weekend against Miami. But on Friday, he did finally, out of nowhere, kind of explode offensively. One goal, two assists in their 5-2 win. Um, how how much did that have to do with Miami? There, that that's like the my. It's funny, like Miami's that team that's just like, yeah, they're like right around or right under 500 every year. They're usually just like a pain in the ass team to play against every time I see them play. They had like their, uh, I don't even want to say glory days because I feel like their glory days were like, yeah, we got like, we're receiving votes to be number 25 in the country. <laughs> like, it was, like, they've always been just like a pain in the ass team. But that's just been their they had MO a couple for of years when they were actually pretty fucking good. But right. it's been that, a while ago. Since. Yeah. And right. oh, weird. Now all that's shifted over to St. Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, weird. I wonder how that happened. Um, <laughs> But either way, he went off for three points on Friday, and he looked great. Like, this whole year, again, I will say, that, like, he it's not that he's been playing poorly. It's just there's been so many games where, like, yeah, he'll make one or two good plays, and it's like he's just, like, there. But he's been also playing a lot. There have been a few games where he fucked up pretty bad. Um, again, I think a lot of it just comes down to usage. But at the very least, I thought it was worth mentioning that he did finally have one of his games where, like, that is the player that they drafted in the second round and were loving it. Like, they were very thrilled to get him where they got him because he's shown flashes, like, for five, six, seven years where he could be a ridiculous transition defenseman who puts up good points, who is good defensively. Like, he's shown so many flashes throughout the like last few years. And then... You know, it's just he hasn't really kind of hit at that level yet. Um, so at least wanted to give him credit because I he is one guy that I've been pretty hard on, I feel like, since I started this whole podcast or whatever. Um, so whenever he does have one of these games, like, oh, fuck, there he is. There's the guy the Minnesota Wild drafted in the second round. I feel like it, we, I just have to mention it because I do like him as a player. I, I really do. Yeah, I feel like he kind of gets lost in this prospect pool, to be honest with you. He does because he's in a weird spot. Like St. Cloud, again, is kind of the unassuming team. Went in as a true freshman. Like you kind of get lost in the shuffle in that sense. Like you watch and what it, he I, did. You see see freshmen should not be lost on people. Totally. I feel like in, totally. as much as I was criticizing because he was making like he had a ton of dumb penalties his freshman year, but he was going into St. Cloud, which like traditionally they have like a full and whole roster, of, like 21 year olds. Right. And they were top five in the country when he stepped in. And he was playing like 18 minutes a night as a fucking 18 year old. And the fact that he put up like over half a point per game that year was crazy. Um, we'll and then the uh, next year, again, last year he took a major step forward. It's just this year in terms of like this year, it kind what of you were out. looking for that. Yeah, exactly. You're looking, you're always looking obviously for the next step in their development year after year. And this year it definitely felt like it stagnated. I still am going to put a lot of that on the fact that St. Clouds had that, weird season um and he's being used way differently than he's ever been before um but either way just really nice to see him pop off because like when he is playing confident and he's being like 
when they're throwing him in positions to succeed, that's when he sticks out. And like, he still is doing the things that he does well. Like he's still doing that. Like I, I yeah. love what it's his success rate for like stretch passes from behind his own net is fucking unbelievable. Like his passing is insane. Like he yeah. is fucking insane. That. And it's very fun to watch because he will, he will spring guys in for breakaways without looking like three times per game. It but is that's very been fun the only constant, right? Can we agree on that? Like that's the only thing that's and it's really that. not that. Yeah. And like, that's not what like you're not gonna do that in the NHL. Like, well, even if you do, that's not game, like you know a big mean? enough differentiator. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, it's not a diff- yeah, exactly. That, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, it it's still a great thing. My real question then, if you look at it, and I don't care if this is talking about, you know, buying uh, a current NHL player or hey, maybe it's part of something to like aggressively move up and get your guy in the, this upcoming draft. Jack Peart being included in a trade where like among the defense prospect pool, like, does that scare you? Is that one that you're okay with because of the question marks? Do you look at the ceiling and say, fuck, I don't know. I don't like that. Like what? I don't know. Generally across the collection of defensive prospects, how would you feel about Peart being part of a trade? Yeah, I think that's one where obviously I'm like, all right, well, what is not just what's coming in, but what is like, what is the whole package? I'm but, more saying in comparison to other defensive prospects being included. Right. I lean more towards like, a, all right, but I'm not going to sit here like, be like, oh, you, you just can't lose this guy. So, okay, so it's, let's go this way. Rank the defensive prospects in the order of which you would want to keep them rather than trade them. Not necessarily where you rank them right now, but like just looking at the, the outlook of organizationally speaking, who you can't trade. Where does he sit in that? Is he three? Is he five? Is he 10? Like that's more yeah. what I'm going for here. I, I probably took yeah. way too roundabout way of asking it, but. Yeah, I'm close, like five beyond, and so that's why I was like, "Well, yeah, it depends." What like I would love to keep this kid, obviously, because right. But for the right, as we said, you have no problem including him, knowing that, like, yeah, high ceiling, low floor. There's a lot of fluctuation here. Yeah, exactly. That's where I kind of land on that. I would I would have told you the same thing about like Marshall Warren, who like doesn't even come up anymore because at this point he's at Michigan. He's not. I mean, I don't assume he's part of anyone's plans at this point also what a what a drop yeah that's yeah it's all right they'll all be blue jackets eventually the whole team (laughs) jesus christ they fucking love it they love it they love taking michigan kids but um i mean if fantilly falls in your lap you don't question it (laughs) oh yeah all right i mean and gavin gavin brindley too what a fucking player. I fucking love that guy. Uh Adam or uh sorry. Uh what what is the first name? Gavin. No, 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 not Brindley. Brindley. No. Johnson. First name. Johnson. Gavin. What? Gavin. Gavin Brindley. Ga- Gavin Belson? No, I'm not saying Brindley. Yeah, I know you're not. I just wanted to piss you off. Um Either way, it's very funny that we ended this. I'm like, hey, how do you feel about Pert trade? <laughs> I guess I'm like, I'm gonna mention this because he popped off offensively, right? <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of Kent Johnson, by the way. Kent, Kent, God fucking dear me! Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. there we go, Kent, Kent. Either this way, shout out Jack me. Pert. So now he's up to ten points in 26 games this year <laughs> after his three point effort this weekend against Miami. Uh, all right. All right. We can we can carry on. And uh, actually, Mateo teased this next one up. Uh, what? Shit. 16 minutes ago? Six Liam days Ogren ago? Almost sent one through the net today. What yeah. Liam Ogren. Liam. He is so back. Um, he's doing the thing uh, where he is like, I will score goals. Assists, I don't like those. I like to score the goals. Everyone else, you guys worry about the assists. Either way, Firestar, I think they're first in the SHL 
And he, as I've said, like the last two or three weeks, he's graduated to their top uh, left wing position. Um, the, the dude, he, this kid he, rips pucks like Beckman needs to get in his driveway, have some Ogren tape up on the like a TV screen next to him so he can take notes. He scored today, like as, as Mateo said, that puck, if that net wasn't there, it would still be in orbit. Like, you want to talk about grip it and rip it? Holy fuck. Like, he's so fun to watch, and he is in that mode. It's funny because, like, this is his first legitimately, like, full year in the SHL. Like, he played however many games his draft year, but like on the fourth line, maybe a minute and a half a game as they all do. And like last year goes, the all Svenskin develops playmaking also scores goals, like just really well-rounded offensive game. He just kind of stepped into the, the SHL. It was like, I will score goals better than literally all of you. This is what I do. This is all I need. Um, suck it. And like it's on and off his stick immediately. Um, so goals in both games this week, he was at one point going for the Cy Young, but mm -hmm. he added two assists over the last couple of weeks. So he's got seven goals and two assists for nine points, um, in his, what is it now? 16 games back. Um, first five or six though, he was playing fourth line minutes. He's like basically just getting him healthy again. But now that he's like fully healthy and like they're throwing him on the first line, he is literally grabbing pucks and just not even looking. I think at this point, he's like, yeah, no shot. Thank you. Like, doesn't matter where he is. He's like, yeah. Kill, are we killing a penalty? Throw me on the ice. Yeah. I will shoot from 80 feet. Don't care. Um, but he looks incredible, which I was curious to see how he'd look after the world juniors. Cause like, I don't think he played poorly at the world juniors, but he just did not produce anything offensively for them. Um, so I was curious to see if that would like, there be any kind of like hit to the confidence going back victim into league play. Shaming. Victim shaming. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah, sweet. Um, this is in the gold medal game because Captain Liam Ugrin can't yeah, put up points. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I was curious to see what he'd look like after the juniors because, like, hey, like, is he going to be reluctant to uh, just hit fucking send every time he touches the puck? Nope. No fear. He looks even better than he did before. So. Um, just wanted to mention that he did score in both games this week for the best team in the SHL right now. They are in first place. I just checked again. Um, fuck, dude, he is incredible. I can't believe they've got, like, when you look at the guys that will be coming over from Europe in the next couple of years, it's comical. Just, like, the fact that it's him, who's a Dinov and Yurov, that at some point, we'll touch on both of them before we end here. Uh, look at that trio's coming over at some point in, like, a year or two fun fucking rules so so much fun and they all are like so different too where who's a dino gives you a little bit of everything year of is having his breakout year loves scoring goals loves like setting up goals loves to play center plus uh oh uh oh we're gonna lose him ogren who might just be an absolute fucking sniper <laughs> I know I'm watching it go. I'm like, fuck, no, no, no. All right, we're going to move on. Just want to mention, Ogre, both goals, or game, goals in both games. There we go. Now we've got John Robinson in all seriousness. What is the word on your of? One day signing, next day he is not. Will Hines even play him or Murat or just bag skate them? Hines hates prospects. Perfect. We can do the last two guys we wanted to talk about together here. We can just like wrap it up. Um, I think at this point, we've got a pretty good idea that Yurov sounds like he's going to be signing, which is, again, I think is fine. And probably like this is his first full year in the KHL, getting good minutes on a really good team. Great. Let him do that again instead of sending him to Iowa to get told to actually, I guess what's face is gone now. So no one will tell him to just shoot pucks in the driveway. Um, but I think what it sounded like was 
potentially signing a one-year deal in Metallurg and then finding it and then they like, figure it out from there. I think that makes sense, especially when you look at the contracts that Minnesota has signed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather have him play 18 minutes a night, top line the KHL, than doing that, or well, just coming over to Iowa and doing, I don't know, whatever those guys whatever are doing down there. Does. <laughs> I have no fucking idea at this point. Yeah. Um, but he did break Tarasenko's record. He's got more points now. So he is like the highest producing you, what, 21-year-old in the KHL that have been drafted to the NHL um, in terms of like his age group or whatever. Like he just broke that record, which is phenomenal. Um, but it does sound like he's going to sign, which I fully support. Totally fine. Not worried about that at all. Of course, it's Minnesota, so we have to panic anytime someone resigns in Russia, which is also very funny to me. It's just like it word is on the street is it's like I know, oh yeah, no, that's I'm not like carving anyone, but it's just so funny that it's just like <laughs> anytime Russian pros like they were offered a contract, everyone's like, fuck, we're done. All right, fuck. <laughs> we're moving to Dallas again. God damn it. Um <laughs> it's right. fucking Cosgrove. You're off and oh, we get here and exclusively eat burgers and milkshakes. I need it. Shout Bro. out Hovenov. Shout out Hovenov, who I don't even know if he's playing hockey anymore. So shout, shout out, out Hovenov. And also Hovenov. shout Incredible. out Bill Kessel for inspiring future generations. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Basically, Hovenov wanted to be Phil Kessel and he just didn't execute properly. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a high bar to clear, you know, like whatever. It is. Um Fucking Hovenov. I <laughs> it's he was a fascinating human being to watch. The, the <laughs> give a fuck meter was just ridiculous. He had a he had a two hour meeting with the Iowa Wild coaching staff about losing weight, and they saw him at the airport an hour and a half later with a milkshake in his hand. Like that's the greatest player of all time. <laughs> oh phenomenal love him forever love him forever for that um all right you're off you can have a milkshake if you want so i don't give a fuck anyways uh he's up 47 points this year probably will be back in the khl next season that's fine hopefully it's just a one-year deal but the big one to track now for this season who's at dinov um you know, there were rumblings from Russo before that they were looking at, ideally, once Sochi's season ends, which is in 10 days. They've only got four games left. Um, you know, bring them over, see what you've got at this point with the season. But I am wondering now if that throw, like the fact that they're going like, to trick themselves into making the playoffs here. I wonder, I'm praying that if they do end up signing who's a Dinov, this does not factor like the fact that they're looking at a playoff spot. So help me fucking God. If that fucks this thing up with who's a Dinov, like, please let him play. Please bring him over to play. Please sign him after this. How, how Get him out of there. The playoffs without Freddie Everson. I don't, I don't see how that's possible. It's a great point. It's a great point. Um, literally like it's almost as if once Russo said, it sounds like, the wild are thinking about signing who's a D dog once the season ends to see what they've got in him at this point with the lost season that I think we all are on the same page about makes sense to see what you've got. And they were like, we're going to win every fucking game. We're going to, we're never going to lose again now because the, this tweet. So it's driving me fucking up a wall. Did and the now I have Marat. Who's an Adinov? Is that the new conspiracy per source confirmed? Um, I don't know anymore. The, 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 I, I, the past couple weeks, I've just been like waiting for the KHL season, the regular season to end so they could bring him over to just to see him in the NHL. Cause I think it makes sense again, like Russo said before, like see what you've got here. Um, nothing really to lose right now. Like wh- uh, I'm not worried about burning a year off that contract. I would love to see him in the NHL this season because he's played at a very high level in the KHL for three years now. Um, and we've seen what he looks like with other good players around him. So she fucking stinks this year. So it's been not the same production as last year, but um, pucks eaten really for 60. Through the roof. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. He is playing a whole lot of fucking defense. He's he did block. I think in one of the games we had like four blocks, and like I mean, he was eating them in the chest. It was just like Jesus Christ. That that'd be a fun exercise for us in the summer when we have nothing to talk about. Find every player's like peak per sixty, like whatever that <laughs> means. Like Brock I don't want to know what Duhans is. Duhames is the most unhinged thing you could think of. I don't know what that would be. Duhames is uh, Gators wrestled per 60. Oh, that's a good Florida, man. That's a good point. That's a good that took, that's that took a good me one. all like three seconds. We can come up with something way better. Yeah, I know. It, it just makes sense, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much more to go off of. I'm just hoping, again, in 10 days, we'll know for sure. Because that's when Soshi's season ends, I think. Yeah, 10 days. Um, I would love to see him just get a look over here. Who knows if that actually happens, but at this point it doesn't, I don't, I feel like there hasn't really even been any chatter around him. Uh, who's the of re-signing. So it kind of feels like this would be a logical time to uh, at least get him over here again. I don't give a fuck about burning a year off the contract. Like I, <laughs> I don't care. Um, so yeah, I don't know anything else that we wanted to, uh, touch on before we let the good people go after fucking two hours of nonsense no no episode 100 going out with a bang yeah it's about all all right well thanks to everybody who has been here suffering through the last two hours with us um i think we'll be back live Next Wednesday, well, back to our normal day? Question mark? Yeah, I, don't Next question point? I don't think Valentine's Day happens twice in the same month. No. I can only That's pass cool. or fail one time. I, I can't have another one. Yeah. Accurate. <laughs> nice job. I don't even know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's clearly about the growlers, but I appreciate it either way. Yeah. Either way, yeah. Big compliment. Um. The, uh... Yeah, well, anyways, we'll see everyone next week. Or you won't. Who knows? <sighs> you can't throw that 100 out. episodes. Fucking rights. Let's go. That's insane. That's disgusting, actually. It's unfortunate for so many people. They keep coming back. Like, gl- yeah, it's on them <laughs> at this point. Yeah, yeah. They're Clearly yeah, they're Minnesotans sick. that literally just want to be hurt over and over. They're like, this is nothing that we've lived. We've done this for fucking ever. Like you, you doing this a hundred times is nothing. This is child's play. All right, whatever. We'll be back next week or we won't. Who knows? It's going to be great.